Okay, so um, hi everyone. Uh, thank you for joining. Um, so today we'll be doing a, you know, um, a summary on some supports offered at Dalhousie University for students coming in or already admitted. Um, so my name is Mercedes Stem, and I'm the Indigenous Health and Medicine um, Assistant. I'm going into my last year of my undergrad. I'm majoring in neuroscience and I minor in Indigenous studies. Um, I do a lot of stuff around the campus. I'm involved with a lot of different societies and um, initiatives like IHIG and stuff like that. Um, IHIG is the Indigenous Health um, Interest Group here, which is a really um, awesome committee and it's open for Indigenous and non-Indigenous members. So it's, it's, really, it's a really awesome committee that does a lot at DAL. Um, and also I just wanted to give a disclaimer that this session will be recorded um, for those that are unable to attend the live session and they wish to access this information later. Um, so I'm just going to share my screen. I'm just going to get that up. Sorry, it, it changed since I was last looking at it. Don't know why it's doing this now. Okay, there we go. Now it's up. I guess it just took a second to load in. Okay. Alrighty. So here's some overview of our contact information. So as you can see, there's me there, Mercedes Stem, and I'm the program assistant. And there's an email you can reach me. Um, and yeah, so. I guess I'll talk a little bit about the program before we move on to the to the plans program. So the Indigenous Health and Medicine program, we really aim to increase representation of Indigenous people um, in medicine. So we do that through a variety of ways, like through recruit, recruit, recruitment, community involvement. Um, hold on, I'm just gonna go, I'll just uh, go over to this page real quick. So yeah, we, uh, we do different things like we help with admissions, you know, mentoring and outreach opportunities, um, the curriculum development, stuff like that. We also have scholarship and bursary, um, bursaries for entrance fees for these types of programs. Like if you need to enter medicine or nursing and you need to do those um, like MCAT or CASPER, um, we will help with the fees. And just to backtrack a little bit, I uh, completely forgot to talk about today's agenda. So today we'll first talk, 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 uh, start with my program, well, me and Hannah's program, the Indigenous Health and Medicine, and then we'll move on to plans, um, which Yolanda will speak about. And then we'll go to admissions, scholarships, and bursaries. And we have someone from uh, recruitment here today. Her name is Laura. Um, and then we'll move on to the Indigenous Student Center and Elders in Residence. So Michelle is here to speak about that today. And then we'll do the Black Student Advising Center. And we have um, Ronki here for, to speak on that. And then we'll end with Money Matters, which is some financial resources and stuff like that, which is really important for students, especially right now. Um, and then we'll open it up to questions at the end. So yeah, I'll let Yolanda introduce herself and her program. Sure. So my name is Yolanda Rotungwa, and I am the current program assistant for PLANS. Um, and I'll let Sarah introduce herself afterwards. She's the program manager. But I am going into my third year and I'm studying health promotion. And um, yeah, I just wanted to speak on plans a little bit. Um, so basically, we're similar to Indigenous Health and Medicine, but our focus is evidently on African Nova Scotians or um, Black Canadians. And we want to increase our representation of African Nova Scotians in health professions. And we do similar things to IHIM, like recruitment and retention. And we also um, try to engage with the community as well. And we do also um, partnerships to improve health outcomes within the African Nova Scotian community. So some of the things that PLANS does is uh, we offer programming. So that can be things like summer camps and mentorship programs. And evidently because of COVID, our summer kind of looks a little bit different. Um, but typically we do run summer camps like health science, summer camps and things like that. And we also have different resources like sharing career information or sharing information about health programs. 
and we like to engage with the community by attending community events and going into schools like middle schools and high schools and just kind of uh, sharing our information and letting people know that this is a resource that we do offer. Um, so yeah, just in terms of the people that we engage with, it's anybody from youth and junior high to high school and students and as well as their parents and guardians or family members and then members of the community, people who are a part of the education um, boards in the HRM and just in Nova Scotia and other health organizations, as well as we do work with current post-secondary students. Um, and then we also interact with teachers and student support workers and guidance counselors, which some of you may have at your schools currently. And then we also do work with post-secondary staff and faculty. So Sarah, if you wanted to just, um, let people know who you are. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you, uh, Yolanda. That's a great recap of the plans program and some of the initiatives that we that we have in place. Uh, so my name is Sarah Upshaw, and I'm the plans program manager. Um, and you'll have a slide later with all of my contact information on there as well. If you have any questions or anything you'd like to know, feel free to reach out. Um, and yeah, I just um, would like to give Hannah a chance to introduce herself. I completely um, forgot to add that in at the end. So yeah, Hannah, if you want to just introduce yourself a little bit. Thanks, Mercedes. Uh, so I'm Hannah Asprey. I'm the Programs Manager for uh, Indigenous Health and Medicine. Um, similar to what Sarah said, um, all my contact information will be available on the slide. Um, definitely feel free uh, to reach out to me directly and uh, with any questions in regards to our program or any information that you can't find and I can help uh, point you in the right direction. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you. So as Mercedes mentioned, um, we're going to have a series of guest speakers that we are lucky enough to have speak on behalf of the different supports that we have today. So I'm just going to open the floor up to Laura, who's going to speak on admissions and scholarships and stuff. Yeah, and we'll also allow Laura here to share her screen because she has a few slides to show you guys. Sorry about that, and technology was on my side. And so I'm just going to introduce myself. My name is Laura, and I work in recruitment and admissions for Dalhousie. And so I support all of our incoming students and current students and looking at direct undergraduate programs. And so that could be everything from a Bachelor of Arts to Bachelor of Science, nursing, and all of those types of degrees. So degrees that you don't need prior education other than at the high school level for. Um, so that's a little bit of what I do. Um, I'm really happy to answer any questions that you may have. I'll also leave my email at the end of this. I'm happy to work one-on-one. -on -one. I also work directly with high schools as well and guidance counselors. So if you ever have any questions related to how do you get a transcript to Dalhousie? How do you know where we are in the admission cycle? Those are all things that I support our students with. And um, so really happy to connect at various times. So I'm going to do a little bit of an introduction into what Dalhousie admissions looks like, as well as to what it can look like as a current student, if you had any questions on the admissions level afterwards, um, as well as all of our scholarships and bursary programs on campus. Um, so just a quick overview, try not to overload you with information, but there is a lot to know as well as we're working through this here. Just a really quick snapshot. This is what I consider a Dalhousie 101 that you're going to be looking at here. And so Dalhousie is considered a medium-sized university in Canada, um, 14,000 undergrads, almost 15,000, over 200 programs. So how do you find your right fit in a program and how do you apply to that program once you find the right, uh, the right fit? It's a question that I really commonly answer. I'm really help, happy to help walk through the students through that. You'll also see that we have a variety of master's and PhD programs on our Dalhousie campus. I and mean, those are all supported by the Faculty of Graduate Studies as well. And so a lot available. We are a research intensive university. So when you're looking at Dalhousie as an option, it's a great um, option for in regards to research and intensiveness of academic study. So very reputable around the world and globally. When you are looking at Dalhousie as well, um, there's a couple things to consider if you're looking at our courses. 
And so just on this next slide here, you'll see an overview of our academic program. So as I mentioned, over 200 programs, that's a variety of majors, minors, and courses, over 4,000. Um, currently, we are online, and we're giving a full um, breadth of different subjects that are available, uh, both online and then eventually in person when we are safely able to return. And so we do have 13 faculties on the Dalhousie campus, covering everything from agriculture to our, to our graduate programs and professional programs as well. You'll see management um, listed there, which would be a lot of our business-based programs as well. If you ever have any of these questions about these programs, wondering what some of the basic requirements are, if you go to dal.ca slash programs, which you see shared on the bottom right-hand corner, that's a really great place to start. It'll tell you what the basic requirements are and all of the degrees that are available within those. So each of these faculties have majors that are accessible within them. And that's typically what we're looking for in regards to admission. So when you're going to see the next slide, it's gonna have a quick overview of programs that you can apply to directly from high school or as an undergraduate student. And so those are a variety of different options for students. And some would have different requirements based on what the academic background you have and what you're looking to pursue at the end of the day as well. And so just a quick overview of our admissions process. And I'm gonna walk you through this chart really quickly. It's actually a little bit more easy to understand than it might be upon initial glance. So the biggest thing to remember when you're considering admission to Dalhousie from high school, we're always going to be looking for five courses. It's always going to include an English or a writing course. Now there are quite a few courses that can meet these minimum requirements. And so various courses are named a little bit differently, province to province and territory to territory in Canada. And so a lot of different names to be associated with this. And um, so generally it's gonna be an English or a writing intensive course. So that's gonna be one of your five. Now some courses will have math requirements. And um, you'll see in this math column, for example, um, you'll see the Bachelor of Engineering. And um, that program has a double asterisk next to it. And that's telling you what math requirement you need in specific. So if you're a Nova Scotia student, that's gonna mean that you need one of advanced functions, or sorry, advanced functions or pre-cal um, or a calculus course. So you only have to take one of them. So if you take multiple in your grade 12 year, that's great. We're gonna take the grade that benefits you most for the admission process. So whatever course you do better in um, and you have a stronger grade in, what would be considered as that? You also see some courses do have science credit requirements and that's not all of them. Some students will see, for example, our Bachelor of Science actually doesn't require that you had taken biology or chemistry at the high school level. Although I'd recommend it, it does give you um, the benefit of that background knowledge. We do feel prepared to educate you on that in your first year of study and beyond at Dal. And so there's a lot of options there. Comparatively, something like um, engineering would require a physics course. And so you really want to see kind of what programs you might be interested in and what their exact requirements are, because they are all a little bit different. Um, I also like to point out that when you apply to Dalhousie, you can apply to up to three programs in one application. And so it really does benefit you for that one same entrance fee. Um, you have up to three programs that you can be considered for. And I always say, list them in the order of your preference. So if your top choice is maybe um, a nursing program, and then you'd also wanna be considered for something like science and a Bachelor of Arts, list them in that order. It helps us to work through according to your preference. I also like to point out the other requirements column. And this is a really important one to keep in mind, particularly if you are looking at some of the health-based programs on the Dalhousie campus. These items were added to help students um, when they're looking at admissions, so that's not just grade-based. We're looking for some other attributes. For example, if you're applying to health sciences at Dalhousie, so something like um, respiratory therapy would fall under that category. We're going to ask for a little bit more about your interest in the program and um, we'll ask for some more information about why you want to study in that field. And so it really helps us define where your interests fall within the health sciences. Comparatively, someone like Casper also has a test that's meant to kind of evaluate your skills outside of the classroom. And so how do you react in a stressful situation? Those sorts of things, which are really important for our skilled nurses um, coast to coast in Canada. And um, so those are a couple of items that you'll see there. And that's all part of that one application to Dow. So generally five courses, always including an English or a writing credit, and then various math and science credits by subject. If you ever have questions about any of these requirements, you're welcome to send any of our team members an email. And um, we're always really happy to connect. And we also do multiple sessions online um, and in person when possible to go over these requirements and exactly what they look like. We're happy to do one-on-one -on -one or general sessions as well. And so really happy to connect if you have any questions about these. 
them moving ahead. Looking at the awards and financial information, and this is all part of the admissions process. And this is something I'd like to point out to our incoming class, but also to current students, depending on where you are in the cycle. And so while our application is open for a good uh, majority of the year, the awards and financial application or a general entrance awards application is only open until March 1st of each incoming year. So for example, it'll be open until March 1st of 2021 for students looking to start next September. And the general entrance awards pool is one of the uh, more straightforward pathways to awards and financial help on the Dalhousie campus. And the way that this works is it's one common application for all of the scholarships and bursaries that we offer on campus. And so it's going to be our largest pool ranging from $500 to just about $42,000. And that could be on, based on a variety of items. Some students are always concerned. I'm not the strongest student, but I'm very involved. Um, and I volunteer and those sorts of things. And this is your chance to show that. Um, it's not always displayed on your academic application for admission, but this is where those things shine. Um, so really take advantage of it. You're gonna tell us a little bit about your academics, your extracurriculars, leadership, community service, and financial needs. All of those can be part of this application and they're all taken into account. And I always say, the more information here, the better. Some students are a little bit worried about telling me their time they spend volunteering with their grandma in, a, in an old folks home, whatever it may be. This is your time to share that information with us. Um, and it really is only there to benefit you. Um, so a really great opportunity for that additional funding. About 27 million was given out to our last incoming class. So a really great opportunity. I always like to point out as well um, that if your grades do increase from the time that this is received in March to the end of a grade 12 year, that can only benefit you again. So we will reevaluate as your grades go up um, and you can only receive more funding. So a really great opportunity there. And if you do find yourself to be a current student as well, I always like to point out, so this is just for students that are incoming to the Dalhousie community. Once you are a current student and you have the opportunity to apply for scholarships and bursaries twice a year, and um, so that's a really great opportunity to take advantage of. Um, and I would highly recommend that to all of our students. Um, it's a very simple, straightforward online application through your DAL online account. And a lot of funding available through that route as well is actually doubled in for this academic year in response to COVID. And um, so a really great opportunity for additional funding as well. Um, so definitely something to consider if you are looking at coming to Dalhousie um, in the years ahead. There are a couple additional awards that fall outside of that a general entrance awards pool, uh, but something to keep in mind is that those are all listed on the website. They typically have a deadline of March 1st. The only one in advance of that would be the Schulich Leaders Award. Um, if that is something that you've heard of before or you wanted more information on it, uh, you can find that on our admissions website as well. It's a really great uh, funding opportunity and that funding goes right up to about $100,000 and you can be nominated by your high school for that. And so a really great opportunity, particularly if you are going into a STEM-based program. And so really great options. I'm gonna give you a quick overview of our timeline, what to expect in regards to the admission cycle. So the Dalhousie admission cycle starts on October 15th. So that's when our application opens. And I always get a couple of emails around that time of year, a little bit worried about what that academic period looks like. Should I wait until I have some grade 12 grades? I'm not too sure, I'm not confident. My biggest recommendation to any student looking to come to Dow for any of our programs at the undergraduate level is to apply when the application opens. Um, and my recommendation for that is because it gives you the most opportunities to be admitted on various sets of grades. So for example, if you apply in October, that means that we consider you for all of the different grades that you have, your grade 11, your grade 12 first semesters, and your grade 12 second semesters. Uh, so it's giving yourself the maximum opportunity. It also gives yourself the maximum opportunity to complete any supplemental items that you may need, whether that's a scholarship application or CASPER testing for nursing. And um, so all of those items would give you some time and a barrier there to make sure that you're not meant missing any important dates or deadlines. And we do offer a variety of events in November, particularly our open house, which will be online and virtual this year. So a really great time. If you're wondering, I have interest in a couple different programs, but I don't know what those actually look like. That's a great time to join us. We'll be doing full online sessions related to uh, various health-based programs and all of our programs that you find at the undergrad level. And so that'll be fully accessible online as well. A great opportunity to join in and we'll be doing a full in-depth admissions walkthrough at that time as well.
We'll see a couple dates and deadlines related to various health sciences based programs, nursing and vet tech here. And they just have deadlines that are a little bit earlier in the year and so that we can start to work through some of those wait lists because they are very popular programs as well. And so just making sure to have all of those applications and supplemental items in by the end of that time period. You'll also see the entrance awards deadline of March 1st there as well. Towards the end of the year, this is when students are typically already receiving offers. And then there's a couple of other items to keep in mind. So you'll see a little bit of information about first year course registration. So that's how you're going to get supported through how you select all of your courses online. And it is accessible via our website, but we also do full information sessions on that. So we really recommend that students join in. And then it gives you a quick snapshot of what to expect over a typical summer at Dalhousie as well, when you should be thinking about different things and when classes typically start as well. That's just a quick overview of what our admission cycle looks like. If you have any questions, you're welcome to send me an email. Um, I'm so grateful to have had the chance to speak with you all today. And if you think of anything afterwards, happy to chat as well. Um, I also support all current students through various admission processes. So maybe you're in a program and you realize it's not quite for you and you're wondering how you switch programs, anything along those lines, really help you, helpful and available to support you through that. Um, we do a variety of drop-ins at the beginning of each semester. And then other than that, if you just send me an email, um, I'll get back to you quite quickly and we can schedule an appointment if needed. Um, so I'm really happy to connect. Uh, so thank you all for having me today. Um, if you have any questions, my email is there and I'm happy to connect as well. Awesome. Thank you so much, Laura. Um, if you have something else you need to do, you're more than welcome to scoot out now because, um, you know, in case any, unless anyone has any questions for you now, um, we don't really, you know, need you to stay if you have something else to do. Um, thank you so much. All right, so I'm just going to share my screen again, get that same uh, PowerPoint up. Is it working? I think it's working. <laughs> yeah, all right. So we'll just, um, play from here. So that's, these are just some um, admission um, emails and scholarship and bursary email contact information here in case any of you guys need um, to email anyone. So each one of these emails are for a different, um, you know, requirement or topic that you need to speak on. So you can email admissions over anything to do with admissions. Um, international admissions is for more for um, international students. So if we have any international students, um, you know, with us or listening, you can email that. Um, and then we have enrollment services, awards, transfer credits, and student accounts. So each one of those are a little bit different. But if you need to email any of those, you can, um, you're more than welcome to. So we're just going to move on now. We're going to move on to, um, sorry to the next topic. So we'll be talking about the Indigenous Student Center and, and a little bit about the Elders in Residence program. Um, but we have Michelle here today and she'll be the one speaking on this. Uh, but before she starts, unless she wants to, do you want to um, introduce yourself first and then we'll do the video? Yeah, I'll just uh, introduce myself and uh, that sounds great. Um, so my name is Michelle Gravelin. I'm the Indigenous Student Advisor and um, I work out of the Indigenous Student Centre and I've been with Dal since 2017. Um, before that I worked in uh, the public school system so I am always happy when I see a student that I worked with come through uh, to Dal. Um, it doesn't happen very often but Occasionally it does, so always happy to see incoming students that I knew from before. Um, yeah, I, uh, I do wear lots of hats at the Indigenous Student Centre. Um, I am the advisor, I manage the centre, I do outreach, I create uh, media content and manage our media, uh, I plan events. Um, so yeah, it's kind of a one-person show, although, so I'm really super grateful um, because there's students, um, especially upper level students, although you can volunteer at any point when I put a call out, but I have some solid upper year students that have been really um, supportive this, you know, this go around. And so I'm really super grateful for them. Uh, so we'll, we have a little video here that was put through, I think um, the on track program uses it. Uh, so yeah. All righty. Thank you, Michelle. Welcome to the Indigenous Student Centre. We are also known as 
the ISC. Located on 1321 Edward Street, first floor, come here to relax and make the most of our computer lab with free printing. Or find a quiet place to study or eat lunch, meet other students and build our community. We offer free support and programming, free tutoring in math and writing, on-site academic and study skills workshops, and we can provide you with bursary and scholarship information. Join us for social and educational events, like our annual Maui Omi, our monthly Friday feast, cultural workshops, and more. Check your DAL email for your monthly ISC newsletter for info, events, and news. Follow us on Instagram at DAL Indigenous Center. And join our Facebook group, search Dalhousie's Indigenous Student Center. Come in and meet our friendly staff. Or connect with us virtually, we are here to support your success. Michelle Gravelin, Indigenous Student Advisor. Dal.ca slash ISC. It's always so weird having your name <laughs> come out in a video. Still not used to that. Uh, so that's the center. And, you know, I have to say a lot of students have reached out to me and, you know, to tell me how much they miss the center and how much, you know, how much they love the vibe of the, of the space. And um, it's really, when I first got hired, you know, we moved three times so we had just moved in there. We had to move out winter term and we moved back in. And so uh, after renovations, so it was a lot in one year uh, to organize, but arts on the walls. Um, it's sort of a smooth running uh, space now, but you know, here we are virtual. So what, uh, what can happen now uh, for this year? Um, we, I do have, uh, for incoming students, uh, obviously we have some orientation activities that have started as of last night with the friends and family event uh, that I was part of, but um, we do have a welcoming session for incoming students um, Wednesday, September 9th, so it's a little bit into the start, uh, well I guess first classes are the 8th, so, uh, but a lot of welcoming events are happening next week. I wanted to sort of try and start spacing things out a little bit so students aren't super overwhelmed and can also take part in, in other uh, on-campus um, or virtual but through campus events. Uh, we do have a Working with Brightspace um, workshop coming up on that is happening on September 3rd and so we're meeting with Michelle McDonald who's Mi'kmaq and works here at Dal and is considered one of the Dal um, Brightspace experts so she'll be connecting with us and that is actually open to incoming and current uh, Dal students because obviously current Dal students also have to really embrace Brightspace as well. Uh, we have so, and then some ongoing talk sessions, I'm calling them. So we have one on Money Matters, uh, September 15th. We have a Holistic Health one, September 29th. Uh, meet Academic Support, so that'll be Meet Tutors, the Indigenous Librarian, uh, some Academic Advisors, the Writing Center people, and so that's September 23rd. Uh, we're going to do a mask making, uh, and so that's this kind of, you know, COVID-19 mask, but it's around Halloween. Uh, so playing on that as well, and that's uh, later in October. Uh, get your information about that. It'll be coming out in the newsletter. Um, and then I'm trying to figure out a virtual lounge space, lounge space. The technology on that is still sort of getting worked out, whether we're going with Zoom or whatever. Um, yeah, so watch for your Dell emails um, that come monthly as well as all our social media which is up there on the screen um, and it, the information will be going out um, obviously the link for the virtual lounge will go out in email rather than being posted publicly um, so that's important to check your Dell email and I can't stress enough anyway to start using your Dell email 
Um, that's the communication route for most people. It's uh, the most secure. And, um, you know, I know as a student, I don't think I, you know, even as a grad student, I don't think I ever looked at my, I didn't look at my email very much at the Mount. So, um, but it, I, I have, I have come to understand how important it actually is. Um, you don't have to look at everything, but at least look at the Indigenous Student Center email <laughs> and anything from your profs and, and money. Um, <laughs> anything to do with money. Um, what else can I say? Uh, the Elders in Residence program. Um, uh, yeah, so the Elders in Residence program um, is kind of an evolving program. Uh, it's not necessarily connected to the center at this time. It is, it was born out of the faculty, um, Indigenous Studies minor, and it was meant to really support that program in class. And what they found was everybody was accessing the elders on campus. And so how then does that, how then does campus, you know, offer the elders program? So they moved out of the McCain building and into the Indigenous Student Center. Um, and so there, you know, you would reach out to the elders and residents through their email elders at dal.ca. Uh, there is a coordinator. Um, I know that there's some, maybe some changes happening soon. I haven't heard what those are going to be yet. Um, but uh, that program, like I say, is evolving. Um, and so hopefully good things are, are coming with that. But uh, you can currently reach out to the elders through elders uh, at dal.ca and um, they offer a variety of supports. There's elders, um, you know, from this territory, there's elders from other territories in the Shinabe. Um, I'm not sure what other, but there's, you know, there's a few from different territories. And so if you have a specific elder that you need to communicate with, um, and they offer, you know, they'll do ceremony, they'll have conversations, they have some teachings that they can impart. So um, they're there for students as well. Um, yeah, that might be, um, you know, Twitter, like, you know, and check back with our, our, our website as well. I'm trying to get that updated. I'm gonna have a trivia game on the website um, coming up soon. That's where some prizes um you know and that'll help students figure out the website uh, the larger dell website important information and so forth so trying to make stuff fun <laughs> and engaging and everything's attached to prizes mostly dell swag so dell students love their dell swag so it's important to to try and win some of those prizes and get your collection started so when you arrive on campus you have a nice nice collection to to wear and to use. Awesome. Um, just before Yolanda um, goes on, I just like to say like that I really love the Indigenous Student Center. So if you know any, any of you students get a chance to connect or even eventually be able to go there, um, I would strongly recommend it. Um, I've been going to the Student Center since my first year and I've gone every year since and even if you just go for the free printing, <laughs> um, it's still, you know, still an advantage. So. Yeah, I really, I really just wanted to say I really recommend going to the um, Indigenous Student Center and, um, you know, reaching out to Michelle and stuff like that, because it will really help you with your first year, especially, but every year after that also. So I just like to say that. I will say, too, I mean, as of right now, we're, we're closed, obviously. I don't know how the free printing is going to get mad. I'm trying to work that through in my brain, because there are certain students that really relied on that really heavily. Um, we're being reassessed mid-September whether we'll open a, a day or two. So right now it's not going to be, but uh, I think Dell has to sort of see how things are gonna go and what's gonna happen in the fall with uh, COVID and everything. So, um, you know, things change rapidly and decisions get made, you know, so we just have to keep in touch with, with what's going on. I'd like to, you know, be able to, if anybody has any uh, dreams of what can maybe happen as an outside event, I'm open to hear something as well. Thank you so much, Michelle. Um, next up, I would like to welcome Bronke to speak about the Black Student Advising Center. Uh, okay, I think I'm on. Okay, I'm on. 
Okay, how are you everybody? Um, my name is um, Olu Ronke Taiwo, but everybody calls me Ronki. I'm the current Black Student Advisor, a position I've held for almost 12 years now. Um, a little bit about myself. I'm originally from Nigeria. I was a professor and, and also changed to social work when I came to Canada 22 years ago. And um, I have both my bachelor and master's in social work. So those are my um, profession. And um, I am, uh, my main role is to support students' success. And this is done through one-to-one um, -one academic advising, academic encouragement, advocacy, and supporting students in various ways to experience um, life outside class. I also help to uh, increase through enrollment to increase the number of um, stu black students of African descent at the university, both at Dal and University of King's College. So we do different um, things or different um, events to ensure that students uh, succeed through their journey at the Halsey University. And this includes um, peer tutoring, uh, mentoring program, uh, on-site writing and study skills coaching, on-site career program and resume writing, on-site support uh, for students from the health professions, which is from PLAN. Um, we have cultural and educational events that help students to, to know more about uh, other cultures and also know more about the African and West Asian community. We have, um, uh, we do different events, um, public events as well, to encourage students to know more about racial discrimination and justice. Uh, we have networking opportunities, and this includes uh, bi-monthly birthday events, um, scholarship um, reception, um, birth, um, graduation events, um, um, event, and um, also professional networking event, whereby we bring in um, Black faculty members and Black professionals in the community to, to liaise and, and network with students so that students can be connected with them in ways that can develop a long-lasting relationship. So the center I, has been for the last, the last 30 years. Actually, we celebrated 30 years in February of this year with a big bang. You know, people, call the play, um, BSAC um, home away from home, and that is what it is. Um, we have um, um, a place where students can come in and, and develop relationships and relax and uh, have time with each other and support each other, um, both um, socially and academically. The center has um, two labs, which has five computers in each lab. We have a cozy, um, cozy lounge with kitchenette. Uh, we have a study room. We have um, um, like a meeting room. And we share the backyard with the Indigenous Center. And the, we are on 1321 Edward Street on the second floor. I usually ask, um, however, currently we are not on site but we still meet the needs of students through um, a direct phone call to me or um, through my email, taiwooa.ca. We also have um, a community and outreach as transition to university coordinator um, by name, Monique Thomas, who helps us <clears throat> to connect with students and most especially African Nova Scotian students and does a lot of communication support for us. So um, they can also email her on monique at thomas at um, We do different events and students can continue to connect with us also through uh, <clears throat> Twitter, our website, uh, through Instagram. And uh, we are planning on this coming Monday, August 31st at 6 p.m. Um, orientation, whereby we'll be able to see different ways 
where we can support students so they can join in through the bright space um yeah if students need me they can call me through my cell phone or they can email me so that's all sorry i forgot i moved i muted myself uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Ronki. That was amazing and a very good overview. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, we just have one more page just to show um, you know where it is yeah. on campus. So before I go, if you can correct the the address for Indigenous because we are on the same building, and mm -hmm. you have twelve thirty one instead of thirteen twenty one. Okay. For Indigenous Center, and then the phone call for Mich Michelle was wrong. Yeah, yeah, it was. It's 902-494-949. Okay, well, yeah, we can definitely look over and fix, yeah, yeah. fix that. Sorry about okay. that. That's, isn't that the, oh, it's 494 is our, is the Dell exchange number. 494, yeah. 494, okay, yeah. So that's correct. It's just the 949 got mixed up. Yeah, 8863. And it, it's connected to email the voice, so I get it as an email, or voice to email. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. All righty. Sounds great. So um, we'll fix that up um, and send that too when, with we, when we send the recording. All right. So next, we're just going to move on to Money Matters. So me and Yolanda are just going to kind of quickly um, go over some things that are offered at Dow to students. We're gonna actually just show the page and go through it from there, just so we can, um, so you guys know exactly what to look at and where it is. All right, so I'll screen share that specific um, page. Sorry about this. <laughs> All right. Sometimes it just takes a second to load in to my um, screen because it's just not showing up. Sometimes it does this. Um, I'll try one more time. I think we've all become far more patient with uh, <laughs> technology. I know. In those days when everybody would have to wait 20 minutes so everybody could figure out how to yeah. operate. Every meeting was 20 minutes. <laughs> Definitely. All right, so this is the page. So I'm just gonna go over a few of these, just quickly kind of show you guys exactly, um, you know, what is offered here. So here we just, it just talks a little bit about the tuition fees and costs. So they actually have an online fee calculator, which is really good. It's just right here. You just gotta click this link and it'll come up. Um, I'm not gonna click it just because I just wanna stay on this page and I, technology isn't usually on my side. So you just gotta click this and you'll insert and it'll tell you an estimate of tuition fees for your specific program. Um, and also like, it's just the fee, your overall fees. So you can also find fees for your books um, and supplies and stuff like that. Um, the online bookstore is, is pretty good for that. If you just put in your course, it'll tell you exactly which, um, textbooks you need too. Some online courses require, still require books for you to purchase. Um, and our bookstore is, is currently opening and um, they do curbside pickup and stuff like that. So um, you'll still be able to get your books and you can also get online copies of them also. So this is just a little bit about that and about things that you can, um, you can use for the online fee calculator. There's also a budget calculator you know, tuition fee schedule, incidental fees, international and exchange fees, audit classes, stuff like that. So this is really a good page just to figure out more about um, university costs in general. So if we move on to payments, so if we scroll down here, you know, it tells you exactly for the, 20 and 20, the 2020 and 2021 academic year. So it tells you exactly what you'll need to provide for your payments. And also it gives you all of your payment options. So you can do it through inter internet banking, e-transfer, um, which is Interact. Interact is like an e-transfer. Um, you know, checks, money orders, stuff like that. Um, for indigenous students, if you have um, a sponsor, that's through the third party sponsor. So you should get an email. Um, I'm not an expert on this, but just from a 
personal perspective, you should get an email probably in September, beginning of September, that'll tell you, um, you they need a signature just to verify that this, your sponsor can um, pay your tuition and get access to all of that. So just speak to your um, advisor or your uh, sponsor about it, and they will also give you some more details because every band is different. So just speak to yours specifically and they can help you out. And you can also um, contact um, Dalhousie and they can help you too. Um, but yeah, so for that, you'll just need to sign something. Um, in the past, they have required you to go into the building, but I'm sure now they must, must have um, mailing options or something like that for students since everything's online. But you'll learn more, I'm sure you'll learn more about that as you get your email for that. I didn't receive mine yet, so you guys should get it soon. So next we'll go on to awards and financial aid. So this page really has a lot of information on it. So it's a lot to take in. You might wanna go on and kind of go through each one and, and look through each one because there is a lot here. Um, but it tells you each of the following options to learn about. So you can apply for scholarships, bursaries, student loans, you know, how you're, if you're working while studying, um, managing your money and connecting with um, the advising um, to book an advisor. So this page is really good. If you click each one, it'll tell you very specifics about each thing. You know, working while studying, that will tell you more about my careers. Uh, my careers is through DAL, and that's how you can apply through DAL um, volunteer positions or job opportunities, co-op options, stuff like that. And then um, next, I'll just quickly go over some forms. So the, these are some forms that you might be asked to fill out or sign. So the third party billing is what I was speaking about. So that one, I'm assuming, I don't know much about it, but um, if you click on there, it'll tell you more about that. And then the UPASS refund waiver. So this year they're, they're making it a lot, a lot easier to refund that fee in case you don't need a UPASS. Um, if you're not in Nova Scotia, if you're not gonna be leaving your house, um, it, I think it might be beneficial to you know, re get that refund. Um, and then it tells you more about the late fee waiver and here is the DSU health and dental plan. Um, and you can opt out of this. So if you already have coverage um, through your band, you can opt out of this. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if there's a form or some kind of page to show you exactly how to do that here. Um, but if not, you can always email advising or even, you know, you can email me, I can help with that. Or I'm sure Michelle can also help with that um, because she's been through, I'm sure students have gone to her um, to ask exactly how to opt out. Yeah, it's um, Dell Online. You go to your accounts, I believe, um, and it has just opt in, out, opt out. Uh, it is important to do that uh, because if you're band funded, your band doesn't necessarily pay for that. And it's over $400 now. So unless it's really necessary for you to have that kind of funding, uh, that kind of medical, you know, health support, um, you could end up with a bill at the end of the term and you're not able to pay or um, register for your next term courses. I've seen that happen. So yeah. it's important to follow through with that. Yes, that's, it's super important. And there's also a deadline for this. Um, I think it's, it's mid September. Um, I don't know the exact date. Michelle, do you? The, yeah, it's the 18th. September 18th is a big day at Dell for a lot of different reasons. Go to the important dates calendar and you'll see why. I think they do say it's actually the 17th at 12 p.m. or 12 a.m. like the yeah. night before. It's confusing because they say the 18th, but yeah, anyway, if you're going to opt out, do it right away. Mm -hmm. You do have to inform them that you have other insurance. So FNIB or your parents have some kind of coverage usually. Yeah, and it'll explain it there too, um, but usually you just have to put your band number um, and then that's usually okay for the FNIB. I'm pretty sure that's all I used, but it'll explain it. So, and you can also contact someone if you need more information on that. But that, like Michelle said, it's super important because like she said, um, our sponsors don't, don't cover that usually. So, um, and it's, you know, I do know a couple people that do it, but most people, they usually opt out because unless you have a, like a medical condition or you're requiring a lot of um, fees that you normally get covered through other insurances that, that you don't have right now, that's the only way it would kind of be beneficial, I think. Alrighty, so next, Yolanda is just gonna speak on the next three topics up here. Awesome, yeah, so thank you, um, Mercedes, for going through that. Just in terms of contacting the Money Matters folks, 
as much as the website is very um, extensive and informative, it might be nice just to contact someone directly if you have just a quick question or something specific. So if you have any questions about fees or payments or receipts or stuff like that, they ask that you um, contact awards and the financial aid team. And that is, would be through um, awards at dal.ca. Um, also student account, student dot accounts at dal.ca. And as you can see, if uh, Mercedes, you scroll up just a tad, they have a bunch of different locations, but due to COVID, uh, the physical locations are closed, so you can't really meet up in person. But if you do wish to um, send something to them by mail, they have all of their addresses and stuff there. Um, but if not, emailing is probably your next best bet. Um, and then if we just scroll over to COVID-19 contact info. Um, so this is a great resource just about um, any sort of COVID updates. So at the, um, at the bottom there, it just says that you can go to dow.ca slash coronavirus. And um, there they have a complete list of resources and links and stuff that will show you um, just a bunch of different updates about coronavirus specific to Dalhousie. So it'll be things like uh, what's happening for the fall term and the winter term once they've confirmed what's going on with that. They have COVID-19 updates that are specific to Dal students and just if you want to know information about faculty and staff um, and for students and stuff like that, they have a great page that'll update you about all of the um, updates considering coronavirus that are specific to Dal. So if you have any questions, I would definitely consider um, going to that website. And last, before we continue, just in terms of uh, the contacting, sorry, <laughs> um, student.accounts at Dal.ca is great if you have any questions about your financial situation at all. And then if you want to reach them by phone, their number is listed right there. And they are open Mondays to Fridays from 10 in the morning to 2 p.m. Um, Atlantic time. So the last section we're going to go over is COVID-19 financial resources. And here they've just laid out basically um, a couple different programs that are specific to students. Um, so they have government programs, so things like student loans, employment insurance, and then they also have the Canadian, or sorry, the Canada Emergency Response Benefit or CERB, and then the Canada Emergency Student Benefit. Um, so they have a bunch of information about details and you know eligibility for this. Uh, these resources. So if you have any questions about that, this would be a great page to head to. Um, and then they have Dalhousie specific programs. So things like undergraduate bursary programs that um, Laura talked about earlier. And then they also have a list of community supports. So the Nova Scotia 221 is a great service for um, things like food banks or housing information or other financial resources specific to Nova Scotia. Um, and then moving down, they have uh, links to things like how to bank or budget your expenses and things like adjusting your budget. So they even got resources to cookbooks and how to budget your groceries. And then at the very bottom, they've just got um, some links to any other resources you might need for further advising. So that pretty much summarizes Money Matters. Um, and yeah, I just wanted to uh, open the floor to anybody who's here. If anybody has any questions, we would love to answer those. And also, if anyone wants to add anything, you can add it now too. If we missed anything, that, anything specific or anything. Yeah, I have a question. Can somebody maybe speak to the um, equity um, admissions? Maybe it's a, I don't know. <laughs> Anybody's yeah. here that could speak to that or what, what Dell might be doing about that within medicine or the health fields. I don't know if there's anything in nursing, but uh, definitely in medicine there is, I think. Mm -hmm. Um. So we haven't really done any kind of research on the equity like um, supports or anything like that, the admissions. 
I can speak a little bit on. Yeah, that's what I was, I was going to say. I think Sarah might um, be able to. So in terms of anything specific, so Dalhousie does have the uh, equitable admissions policies um, and lots of uh, initiatives that are targeted specifically towards African Nova Scotians and um, indigenous students. So checking in each program kind of applies things differently. So it's always important to either connect with um, myself or Hannah and our roles as plan support and as indigenous health and medicine support. Um, and we're able to kind of help navigate to see what the, the most current um, policy is that's in place and how we can best support students that way. So I think it's really important to reach out to us and we can make sure that you connect to the right resources or reach out to each of the individual faculties or admissions um, directly to be able to get the most up-to-date current information about what initiatives are in place and how best to kind of access those resources and supports. Yeah, it would be nice if there was one blanket statement for everything, but yeah, it's, it's a lot of individual things um, based on the different faculties and the different um, routes that people are looking to go. Yeah. Thanks, Sarah. Do we have any other questions? And if anybody doesn't have any questions right now, um, just as we've all kind of mentioned throughout the session is you're welcome to email any of us, myself, Mercedes, Sarah, Michelle, Ronke, um, Hannah, we'd love to answer any of your questions if maybe you are still kind of just processing all this information because you kind of just threw a bunch of <laughs> information about Dal at you. So feel free to send us an email or call any of the numbers that you've seen um, throughout this presentation. And one last thing I wanted to mention, if you just click on the chat, which should be at the, the bottom of the bar kind of on your screen, uh, we have a link to a survey uh, and we're opening it up to any of our participants just to get some sort of some feedback and some information about how you guys felt about the session. And a fun little thing we threw in there is um, after you've completed the survey, and it's really just five, I think, questions, they aren't really extensive, um, but you'll be entered automatically into a draw for a prize, um, and will be, one of the questions involves an email of either yourself or your parent or guardian, whoever is participating, and we will contact you through that email um, if you were the lucky winner of our prize. So be sure to use the link and answer the questions on our survey. And I think it's important to know as well that if, if you, even if you're not watching this live, the link's gonna be included in the recording and you have until Wednesday, September the 2nd to provide your feedback too, so that you have a chance to win. Awesome. Thank you. And thank you all for coming and anyone that's listening right now, thank you. Um, like Yolanda said, if any of you guys have any questions, you can email any of us and we'll we will either direct you to who you need to speak to or we can answer it if we have the knowledge to do that. So yeah, thank you everyone. Thank you everyone for joining today. Um, this is the end of our session. So if there's anything Yolanda or anybody else wants to add then I think we're, we're done here. Yeah, I think that's great. And thank you to all of the staff and faculty that were able to give us a few moments of their day to educate us all on the awesome supports that we have at Dow.